isometrics. I can promise you, you're doing them wrong. So what I did, I found Corey Schlesinger, the director of performance for the Phoenix Suns, and I brought him here to Elite FTS. So Corey, thank you for coming in. Absolutely. I am so glad you're here because most people on the internet have no fucking idea what an isometric <laughs> is, or they're just doing them wrong. So we're gonna be kind of clarifying things today yeah. and kind of just breaking it down. Yeah, for us, for this segment, we're just gonna break down the isometrics really simple. So we have overcoming isometrics, we have yielding isometrics, and then we'll go into what's called extreme isometrics. These are three different types of isometrics that at any point in your workout, you can throw in to hopefully potentiate to make your lifts better, or the other extreme, just general health and well-being. So the first one we're gonna start off with, real simple here. This is called an overcoming isometric. <clears throat> you wanna think of this as like that deadlift that you shouldn't really pull, but you know, that's, <laughs> that's an isometric. So the guys that are lifting too heavy of weight anyways, that is an isometric. You're going against an immovable force. So this is all about motor unit recruitment. This is about being able to create the most volitional force that you can create in one segment. This is gonna generally last anywhere between five to seven seconds. This is a great time to introduce this lift before you go into your major work. So for instance, if you're going into a deadlift day, squat day heavy, this is something you can do to help prepare you to be able to execute those lifts at a higher rate. So for this example, we're just gonna go into a split squat because obviously I'm in athletics, so our guys are in this stance a lot. So what we're gonna do from here is go down, grab the bar, and we're gonna put ourselves into a position that we can maximally create force. So once again, if I'm standing all the way up, I can't create any force. And if I'm down in the hole, well, I can't create maximal force. But right here in this quarter stance, this is where we sprint, jump, change direction from. So from this position right here, we are going to ramp up into the rack. As you can hear the slack taken out of the bar, he's gonna ramp this thing up from 80% to 100% within five to seven seconds. So ready and go, pull. Pull, pull. So he's pulling into this. This thing ain't moving, right? But he has massive motor unit recruitment. And this is a great starting lift for you after you warmed up and you were trying to prepare for that really heavy lift you're about to go for. It's a good way to blow a gasket too. That was, that was, uh, it was funny. I, I was noticing that my grip was failing before my legs were failing. Nice. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> Which is, what does that tell you? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> no, but that's awesome, right? Because that's, when you're warming up, obviously, like you're a me head too, right? right? You can tell when you have good days, when you're feeling good, For when sure. you're feeling like shit. This is a fantastic tool to kind of touch base to see like how you're feeling on that day. For it's sure. Like, it's like when I first grabbed it, it's like, oh, like this feels pretty good. Then you started ramping up and it was like my grip was failing. It's mm -hmm. like maybe I shouldn't go for that max effort right. deadlift today if neurologically I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And that, that's a great way of looking at it because at the end of the day, your intuitive feeling is gonna let you know what you got in the tank today. Don't get me wrong, there's those days we gotta mm -hmm. overcome, oh, just persevere. But especially when you're trying to pull for maximum effort lifts, you probably wanna be in a state to do it. So that lets you know whatever program you were doing the day before mm -hmm. or days before leading up into your big lift and you ain't got it. It's a pretty good way of making sure that you ain't gonna do something before that. Absolutely. If you were gonna go based on this performance or use this before a deadlift, I would suggest not doing a two day train your ass off seminar before you do it. Probably not doing <laughs> that. <laughs> Check that video out too, by the way. Now continuing with our isometrics, this is going to be a yielding isometric. What this is great for is developing great quality tissue, but this is going more towards the health spectrum where we're trying to get more tendon health. So for this one, we're gonna go, we're gonna continue with our theme of our split squat. So we'll go ahead and take the bar out. Now what's great about these racks is they have these ISO extensions. So now I'm able to work all these isometrics that we're working on today based off this nice little attachment that's coming off the rack. So from here, we're gonna go into a reverse lunge, probably get as close as you can yep. to the front, and then we'll get into a split squat. And then from here, we're gonna work our way down to where we're hovering over this stop point. So three, two, one, start dropping down, 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 and hold. And from here, you're gonna start him seeing him get the shakes a little bit. Motherfucker. Now, he's holding this lift, and now he's making mind to muscle connection. He's working his foot. He should be focusing on getting a lot of glute and ham in this. Obviously, he's getting some quad, but here we are truly, you see the shakes happening right now. Do a lot of, especially when you see this type of work, a gentleman to look at is a guy named Keith Barr. He's the one who's did most of the research on this recently. As you can tell, he's got the shakes. He's gonna go for another three, two, one, and then fail out. 
<laughs> so that is a great way of using a yielding isometric. And where I like to place those is generally before certain lifts, depending on the time of the season. But I also like it after those hard, hard lifts, where this is the one thing that you squeeze out the most. I typically use this post games with athletes because this is, where, especially for our high minute players, because this is their way of getting strong or stronger, mm -hmm. but not taking a lot of resources out of them. And this is the one where it's, you come in post game, you just play 30 some minutes, we're gonna hit a single on each side, but we're gonna load this thing up as heavy as you can and keep progressing this load throughout the season so that it's only one rep, but after 72 games, you get up there and wait pretty fast and the goal is minimal effective dosage. You heard the man. Huh? So a lot of the lifts that we do in the weight room, it's objective, right? We want to lift the heaviest weight we possibly can. So that's going to say, oh, I lifted this weight, but it takes a lot of resources from our body. And that's okay because that's the goal of getting mm -hmm. stronger. That's what we would consider an output. I'm trying to create an output to have this objective measure saying I hit this one RM. But what we're talking about right now with all these isometrics is more of input. These are things that I'm inputting into my body so that my eventual outputs will be greater. Mm. So now we're going to go into what's called an extreme iso lunge. Now this is where we're getting as long as humanly possible, right? This is something you're not probably gonna see loaded. So we're gonna take it to the extreme. These are gonna be the ranges of motion that I hopefully don't ever see him getting in in sports. But as far as health is concerned, we're trying to elongate these muscles and we're trying to be able to create strength through a full range of motion. So here, he's already cheating me, but he's gonna be in an extreme ISO. And once again, remember that shaking we saw earlier on that uh, yielding ISO? We're already seeing it here and this is just with his body weight. Now to make this a little bit more quote unquote sport specific, we also have his heel off the ground. So now his, his heel is floating. So he's getting a lot of gastric soleus. And so from here, we're gonna transition him forward a little bit more. And this is where we start getting into the minutes. So there are, there are some reports that there are guys that are having individuals hit anywhere between three to five minutes on each leg, which is happen. pretty intense, right? But for this segment, this is more of the extreme health <clears throat> spectrum. So we went from extreme performance with our overcoming ISOs, trying to ramp up for the lift. Then we have our yielding, which is tissue quality. We're mm -hmm. trying to you know, develop some load and develop some strength. And then this is the exact opposite. This is strictly health. So this is a great opportunity to add this at the end of your session, treat it almost like a finisher. Mm. And it's a different feeling when you're in that position, right? Based on the first two, they, they feel, I know you said it, this was the extreme, right? right? It starts off, you're like, I'm good, I'm good. I'm so good. And then it's like, oh shit. And it just feels like my body is trying to figure out the best way to stabilize. Facts. And the right? one thing, like in the sport, right, which is lifting heavy shit, mm -hmm you're in a limited range of motion. You're trying to create the smallest range of motion so that you can overcome these large loads, which is fantastic. I mean, that's the whole point of lifting weights, right? Yep. Be awesome. But this is the other end of the spectrum so we can continue to be awesome. So this is gonna help us with our health and longevity. Awesome. So guys, there you have it. Isometrics 101. Thank you very much for joining us for this video. As always, like, subscribe, share with your friends, family, enemies, whoever, and we will see you in the next one.